young man, injury to the thumb, I'm going to scroll and ask you to decide, A, what's the injury, and B, how severe is the injury. I'm going to stop right in the mid-coronal plane, and I'm going to draw. Let's draw. I'm going to use my MR picture. It's a template. I have a proximal phalanx. I have a metacarpal. And then I have collaterals. And I'm going to change the color for my collaterals. I've got a radial collateral, which I see right here. There's some signal in the radial collateral, especially on gradient echo imaging. And that's okay in people that use their thumb a lot or older individuals, as long as it's a, it's a continuous curvilinear structure. I'm sure you've already noticed that the contiguous curvilinear structure is disrupted on the ulnar side. But in the normal state, we want to see something that looks a bit like this. With about two millimeters of coverage on either side of the joint. Okay, let's take our, our lines away and look at the signs of an unstable ulnar collateral ligament tear. First sign, the metacarpal is falling off the face of the earth towards your right. Or, in other words, the metacarpal looks like it's drifting eastward. That's an indicator of instability. Next sign, obvious sign, RCL, no discernible, clear-cut UCL, just a ghost. The next sign, if we look at the adductor aponeurosis, and I'm going to draw, here's the adductor aponeurosis, and we look at the stump of the UCL, which I see on my T1-weighted image right there, and my fat spinecho, fat suppression image right there, they look like they're crossing each other. Or normally, the adductor aponeurosis would be in this orientation, the UCL would be in this orientation. So the orientation has changed. I call this the crisscross sign. Another sign of UCL tear or rupture would be the yo-yo on a string sign. I think that's probably best seen on this gradient echo image. Here is the string of the yo-yo right here. I'm going to use my pen to show it. Here's the string of the yo-yo, and there's the yo-yo right there. The yo-yo on a string sign, better seen on this thin section gradient echo image. Another sign that I use is called the fold-over sign. In other words, it looks like the UCL has folded backwards on itself. That's not easily appreciated here. There's a glob of gray signal intensity tissue here, but on the gradient echo, oh, there's the fold over. It's going backwards. This structure I'm going to draw again. Let me see if I get my pen to work. Here we go. The structure, which normally should be going this way, is going this way. The fold over sign. Another sign that I use quite readily is what I call the lollipop sign. It looks like the stick of a lollipop is pointing straight out. Let me draw again. Straight out from the metacarpal. There's the base or stick of my lollipop or the base of my ice cream cone. Then as I scroll more dorsally, that area of interest, here's we're going palmarly now towards the sesamoids just to get oriented. There are two sesamoids. Now let's scroll dorsally just so you get your bearings. We go dorsally, and there is our structure, our UCL, right there, sticking out medially. And it should not be present perpendicular to the axis of the proximal phalanx and the metacarpal. It's sticking straight out towards the adductors. We are on the most dorsal aspect of the thumb. So an exaggerated appearance of our lollipop sign in the dorsum of the thumb. And finally, let's pull down our axial projections. Take me a second to do this, but just trying to be as efficient as possible with your time. Let's blow them up. We have a short axis T1 and a short axis gradient echo. 
and we should see curvilinear radial collateral ligaments on both sides. We do have a curvilinear, sorry, we should see curvilinear collateral ligaments on both sides. We do have a radial collateral ligament, but only a ghost of our ulnar collateral ligament, and where is it? It's pointing dorsal and medial. I call this the dorsal medial lollipop sign. Short axis view, here it is right there. There should be no structure there pointed along the edge of the metacarpal. That is a total clincher for the diagnosis of a stenor lesion. So you've got lollipop sign, dorsal medial lollipop sign, yo-yo on a string sign, fold over sign, empty ulnar collateral ligament fossa sign, just to name a few as indicators of the high grade UCL or grade four stenor type form of ulnar collateral ligament tear. And by the way, this injury has been so violent that we have affected other structures like the adjacent interosseous muscles and the adjacent abductor muscles. As an aside, there are four dorsal interossei and three palmar interossei, although the interosseous next to the thumb is not really an interosseous. It is formed by the adductor pollicis. That's why there's only three along the palmar side and four along the dorsal side. That is an example of a stenor lesion with all the signs wrapped in a neat package.